But what's going on more broadly in the country? That's what interests me. And I do think this date of the 5th of May, you might not have heard much about it so far, but we're going to hear a lot more about it as it approaches because it really, really matters. Now, the red wall, that is absolutely the key, of course. They're the seats that the Conservative Party took from the Labour Party at the last election on the back of Brexit as much as anything else and on the back of getting Brexit done after the agony we've been through. And I am no doubt that Boris Johnson was the right man for that moment. I absolutely believe that. Now, there was a phrase in the last general election that started to be used, and it was Workington Man. And sure enough, Workington went to the Conservative Party, and it was won by a fellow called Mark Jenkinson. And he's with me here in the studio. Mark, good to see you. You as well. You know, Workington Man, and, you know, fantastic victory for you and for the party and for Boris Johnson. Absolutely. To be fair. And whilst I'm not happy with the way Brexit is, there's a lot more to do. But actually, we've left. There's no going back. We had, because we left, a vaccine rollout. You know, I think the Prime Minister made the right appointment. So I'm not saying everything about Boris Johnson is wrong. But there's this side of his personality. It's this uh, relationship with the truth that voters are starting to question. So... I'm going to absolutely say that he has achieved some things since 2019, that I think he was the right man for them. But he's becoming an electoral liability to you, isn't he? Particularly in the red wall. So that's not what I see on the doorsteps uh, at the moment. And we are in full campaign mode for elections in May as well. So how, much, um, how many what, seats have you got up in May? In, in so we, we've got brand new unitary uh, authority elections, so all so out whole right lot. across Cumbria, right, okay. uh, re- new unitary authority elections. Yeah. Um, so one of the first things I would say to you is to, to look at who's uh, making the calls for the PM to resign, uh, and it is absolutely those people who want to steal uh, that Brexit um, from us, uh, and the same as, um, as an electoral liability to them, not to us. Well, William Ragg has called for the Prime Minister to resign. He was a very early Brexiteer amongst MPs in the north of England as well. Roger Gale has called for him to resign. Well, Roger was more of a Remainer, and I get that. These things sound unusual. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, of course, and Keir Starmer, but then that's his job as leader <laughs> of the opposition. Although, I have to say, you know, objectively, he was quite good on his feet today, Keir Starmer. I mean, you could have said it was a fairly open goal. But there is disquiet, isn't there? I mean, you're there in the House of Commons. There is disquiet. But I'm more interested in what's happening actually out there in the real world. I mean, let's remember one thing. You know, and you've been a a political campaigner for a long, long time, and we've been on the same side for many, many years. (laughs) You know, this question of borders. And you would know as well as I do that actually a big part of the Brexit vote in the North was taking back control of our borders, what is happening across the English Channel, is enraging people in the Red Wall. He's failing very badly on that, and tomorrow's a calm day. There'll be loads of boats that come again tomorrow. Uh, The levelling-up agenda appears to be, well, not much more than talk of the Northern Powerhouse. I mean, there are areas here on which they're not delivering, but it's his personality. This is the point I'm making to you, that you can be the happy chappy, you know, you can be the joker, you can be the clown, but actually right now, what people are looking for is straightforward honesty. And Mark Jenkins, I put it to you, that when the Prime Minister said that he went to an event which was advertised as bring your own booze, I mean, let's not you know, pretend, and he says to the House of Commons he thought it's still classified as a work event. It doesn't wash, does it? So I think we've all got stories from particularly that first lockdown. Uh, we heard from Jim Shannon yesterday, so a particularly Very harrowing. Very moving. It was, it was. I mean, you couldn't fail to be moved listening. And there are, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of stories just like that. We had two funerals in my family, one very early on in that lockdown. That, you know, my wife could only attend on her own because I couldn't let anybody in to watch the children. Oh. Uh, we had another one that I had to listen to outside. So does it make me angry and should it make my constituents angry to think that people were potentially socialising in Down Street Garden? Then absolutely it should. But of course, for the detail around that, we do need to wait for that Sue Gray inquiry. Well, we can wait for the Sue Gray inquiry, but I put it to you that what Boris Johnson did today was a half apology through gritted teeth. The first sentence or two, I thought this is good. He's fessing up and that's what he needs to do. But then to pretend that he still thought it was a work event. It's not working, Mark, is it? He reiterated a number of times um, the a full and unreserved apology for all of the misjudgments that uh, made on his watch. These were his words. Made on his watch in Number 10 and across government. I don't think it comes much 
uh, broader... But he still of, thought an event that said, bring your own booze... But, I mean, I don't know if you've been to Number 10, but it is, it's a huge, sprawling complex. You know, people... Oh, come make, on, don't people, give me that. No, it is. I mean, but I he attended this event. He, he did, uh, and he set out his... Um, Understanding of events, and of course, that will that that Sue Gray inquiry will deal do you think with a, a lot of that. Do you think Boris Johnson is a truthful man? I do think he's a truthful man. I think he, um, I think when we see that optimism that people that voters like, uh, I think there is that is absolutely him. He believes what he's saying on the borders bill that you said we need, we absolutely need to deliver on the borders bill. That will uh, make no got, difference at all. That's gone through uh, Mate, the, no the other house now. You know it won't. I know it won't. Well, I think it gives us uh, options such right. as offshore processing and things that will allow us um, to... It doesn't... You know yourself, it doesn't take much of an example to be made to shut down, potentially shut down those uh, oh, people smuggling oh, the boots. Once people don't want to spend their three, five thousand exactly. euros because they're not sure of getting to Britain, it will make a difference whether this and will... that's what we need. Well, the jury's out on that one. We'll wait and see. Finally... Will he still be leader this time next year? I think he will, absolutely. I think he'll lead us into the next election. I think my constituents uh, are still telling me on the doorstep they think he's been dealt a bad hand uh, in COVID particularly um, uh, and, you know, picked up uh, some really toxic Brexit stuff as well, which he's managed to deliver on, as you know. Um, but the sea has been dealt a bad hand and are absolutely willing to give him the benefit of the doubt to deliver right. on the things that we promised at the last election. That was Mark Jenkinson from Workington. But in his own constituency, polling done two weeks ago suggests that Labour are now on 46%, the Tories trailing, and Reform UK on the rise with 7%. We'll get you back because Workington Man is going to be a great barometer, Mark, as we go through the next few months and the next few years. Thank you very much indeed.